Welcome to the final part in this 7 part tutorial series. In this video, we'll be adding power ups into the game. We'll be adding 3 different power ups. A speed power up, a size reduction power up, and a power up that decreases the time on the bullet timer. So let's begin. To get started, we're going to be importing a power up sprite and this will be found in the description and we're going to have to separate these into three different power ups. So just select this selection tool and we're first going to select this bullet and then control C to copy it and we're going to paint a brand new sprite and put this in the middle of the sprite. And then we're going to copy the gear, the gear sprite as well and we're going to paint paste it and put this in the middle and the final one will it will be the speed the lightning we're just going to copy that as well and put that in the middle as well and we can delete this original sprite now to work on the generation of these different power ups we can first rename this to power ups and then go to the code tab and the first thing we're going to do is say when flag is clicked, then we're going to set a brand new variable and we're going to call this variable power up on, on screen. And this will make sure that power ups only spawn one at a time. So we only have one player that's going to be having the power up at, at once. So we're going to call this power up on screen and set it to zero. And then we'll also want to hide the sprite at the beginning of the game. And then we're going to create another another script, which is going to say when I receive play, then forever, then bring in two if statements. And they should be inside each other. And then we're going to look if game active equals to zero or not zero, but one. And then we also want to look if power up on screen equals to zero then we're going to go to operators and we're going to go to control and we're going to wait a random amount of seconds. We're going to wait five to 10 seconds. And then we're going to go to looks and we're going to switch the costume. And then go to operators and pick a random costume from one to three and put that right under the wait seconds. And then we're going to create a clone of the sprite. And then we're going to say when I start as clone, then we want to set power up on screen to one and put this right here and have it go to a random position. Then we're going to make sure that it's not touching any of the boxes so it's accessible to the tanks. And we'll do this by saying repeat until then bring in a not operator and say not touching and bring in sensing and select these two colors. So now we're going to have to start up the game and stop it here. Then we're going to select the inner box color and the outer box color as well. And then if that happens, if it does happen to be touching the box, then we'll have it go to another random position. And once it's done moving around, it will show itself. Now we're going to bring in a forever loop and say forever. And we're going to look if we're touching any one of the tanks. So we'll bring in the two if statements and look if touching player tank one or if touching player two tank and then we'll bring in three if statements for each if statement so we'll just bring another three inside here and first we're going to look with operators if the costume number is one and we can actually duplicate this to make this easier.
and then we'll look if it's two or three instead and two or three instead and then we're going to hide it in each one of them so you want to hide it once it be what's once it has been touched by any of the tanks and then we're going to go to control actually events and broadcast the first one is going to be called player one bullet timer effect and you can just copy this and create another one called player two bullet timer effect and in our costume we're going to have since we have our ammo as the first one we're going to make the bullet timer effect for our first costume in each one and then we're going to broadcast and create another one called player one size effect and copy that and create a new message and call this one player two size effect and then just place each one here and make this one player one size effect so this sprite over here will change the size effect of the the tank and then the final one will be the speed effect so we'll create one more broadcast block and we'll call this player one speed effect and copy it and make a new message and paste it and make it play a two speed effect and just duplicate this and call this player one speed effect place this here and place this here now we just want to do two more things for each of the if statements which is setting the the pickup on screen to zero and then just duplicate and place it under each broadcast block so it's underneath each of them and after that we're going to go to control and delete this clone so after it's been touched we just want to delete the clone so that's it for this code right here now we just want to resize the the power up to 50 and that's a lot better now we just need to go to our player one tank and zoom out and look for the script right here where we're resetting the bullet timer so i'm going to move this to the side and bring in the when flag is clicked as well this one over here so now all we need to do is go to looks and we want to set size to 100 place that here and then go to the red tank and go to its flag and set the size to 100 when flag is clicked now we can move the flag away but we still need to do um, a, a change to this right here which is creating a brand new variable and we're going to call this variable player one timer and I'm going to create another one called player two timer and then we're going to set it to player one timer and then now we need to make the power up effect so we need to go to events and say when i receive player one size effect duplicate this and say when i receive player one speed effect and we also want the player one bullet timer oh it seems like we haven't created that so we'll just redo it if you already have it then it's fine but we need to create a player one bullet timer and I just need to go to the power up and reset this to player one bullet timer and make sure player one is corresponding with player one and player two effects are corresponding with the player two effects. Now we have all the different broadcast messages ready. Now we just need to say in the variables, when I receive size effect, we're going to go to looks 
and set size to 30%. So this will change the tank to be smaller so it's harder to hit for the opposing tank. And then wait five seconds. And once the five seconds has elapsed, then we're going to set the size back to 100. And then now for our speed effect, we're going to go to set and we're going to set the player one speed to eight and duplicate it and set it back to five after we've waited five seconds because five is the original speed of the player and then our bullet timer we're going to go to variables and set the player one timer to one and duplicate this and set it to five after we've waited five seconds and place this code here. Now we have all the edited code for player one. Now we're going to go to our player two tank and do the same thing. So we want to go to the bullet timer and change this We're using the player two timer and we can actually just disable the power up on screen, play two timer and play one timer as well. And bring this here. And what we'll do is go to events and bring in the when I receive player two size effect, when I receive the player two speed effect and when I receive the player two bullet timer effect. And we'll move this here, this here, and this here. And for the size effect, we'll do the same thing. We'll change size or set size to 30%, duplicate, or actually just bring this here and set it to 100 after we've waited five seconds. What we can do is just duplicate this five second and put this here. And for the speed effect, we'll go to variables and set the going to set the player to speed to eight and then set it to five and bring this here. And then for the bullet timer, we're going to set the player two timer right here and duplicate it and set it to one then five. So that should be it. Now we can go to the backdrop and we're going to want to reset these attributes when flag is clicked. And in order to do that, we're just going to set the player one timer to five and set the player two timer to five. Duplicate this and set the player one speed or actually we already have this so it's fine we don't need this extra we just need the timer and that's it now if we click flag and wait for one of the power-ups to show up let's just give it a moment before we actually start shooting the tanks okay so that must have mean that the the power-up spawned exactly but now boop now we can see this one goes faster And then it's finished. This one makes it smaller. And now if we try to shoot, it's a bit harder because the tank is much more smaller. And the power ups now show at a consistent um, time. And if you want, you can go to the power ups and change the time to something longer so that power ups don't show more consistent, more as frequently. So maybe 10 to 20 instead, if that's what you want the pops to take more time to actually show up but i'll just leave it like this actually no i'll change it to 10 to 20 and if you want you can also make the power ups last for longer by changing the wait seconds so instead change it to 10 on either side and that's really it so thank you very much for watching this video please make sure to like and smash the subscribe button so you don't miss the next tutorial series so make sure to stay tuned for that and thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you learned something from this tutorial series and goodbye. See you in the next one.